Welcome to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne will teach you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you. In this episode of Claim Your Excellent Life, we're going to talk about something that's really important. It's really important because it really stands for the quality of life we are living And this goes back to how it is that you would like people to think of you in your day-to-day life. What I mean by that is, well, how would you like people to remember you? Because you see, this is the thing. Our relationships are based on our givingness. Are we there when people need us? Are we willing to listen when they ask us to? Are we willing to be present and in the moment instead of playing with our damn phones? Are we willing to be compassionate, empathetic, proactive? Are we willing to take a stand for them when they need that to happen? Because this is the thing. Humility, courage, presence, caring, sharing, being truthful and honest are the things that are going to help your relationships to mature to places where when you need the assistance from someone in your life, they will be there. And in fact, they will be there maybe even before you ask for the assistance. Why? Because you made it clear that you are always there for that other person. How do I know this? Simple. Back in 2009, when I was going on a trip to Israel, I really wasn't sure if I was going to stay there forever or not, having never been there. But I can tell you this much. I was rather fed up with our government's policies. For instance... The FDA is supposed to be an objective judge based on research regarding the medications that are put for sale in the food that we eat. But instead, they are owned by the big multinational companies that buy the positions that our legislature stay in to stay in power. We have terrible time with oil tankers that are spoiling our water when they get into wrecks because the people who are supposed to be mindful of steering them for whatever reason aren't doing their jobs. So we lose a lot of the natural resources in the ocean, including a lot of the plant and animal life, which, by the way, ends up getting into our food sources as Larger animals eat smaller animals, and they're all contaminated. We have issues with radioactive waste and the radioactive plants that have had big problems over the years. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and I guess there's been one over there in Asia as well, just recently, destroying everything. It's unfathomable that we allow our natural resources to be ruined to the degree that they are. It's unfathomable that our children are eating garbage because we won't take the time to go grocery shopping and buy one item foods, combine them and make healthy foods like we used to do before fast food and packaged food came into being. 
and it disgusts me when I go into a place like Denny's where you have pancakes basically with frosting to make characters on these pancakes to make them more delightful to the children. And then we wonder why there's a 30% increase in type 2 diabetes in our youth since 2001. What do you expect if all you do is give your kids shit to eat? They need healthy fats. They need proteins in order for their bodies to be able to create the constituents to build healthy bones, muscles, nerves, blood, their entire bodies. We defer them to the iPad or the iPhone from the time they're two or three years old and we wonder why it is that they have no attention with the fast acting changes in their visuals as they're looking and playing at these things. We wonder why we have so many autistic kids when they're expected to have 22 shots in the first few months of their lives. And when you consider the poisons that we put inside these injections that we call immunizations, we wonder why it is that they have a problem developing normally. It was with all of these situations that had come to my mind that I really wanted to get the hell out of here. And so what happened before I left? I had some meetings with some people close to me, and it was at that point when I was told by each of them, including my ex-husband actually, what I meant to them. Because honestly, these people really didn't know if they were ever going to see me again. I didn't know what my future held. When I left for this trip, I knew I'd have enough money to pay my taxes. I didn't know how I was going to get a place to live, and I didn't really care. I figured it would work its way out. And it did, as it happened. But at the time, no one knew what I was doing, because I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot to be said for being able to hear before your funeral the meaning that you have given to other people for your having been a part of their lives. Even with people like my ex, where we went through some very hard times together, where there were still appreciations. In fact, he brought a beautiful birthday card to me. It was around the time of my birthday when I left. And he really just honored the fact that he being a guy who really doesn't like change, he really respected the fact that I was willing to do whatever I wanted to do, taking the risk to try to be the person I wanted to be, doing the things I wanted to do in this world. He admired me for that. And I appreciated that input. There were other people who had other very sweet things to say about how they admired my overcoming so many challenges. Because there are some people who've known me for a lot, a lot of decades, and they knew that I have not had an easy time of it by a long shot. I've had a lot, a lot of challenges, mental health issues, physical health issues, issues inside my family, of origin that needed to be contended with. The marriage was very challenging for a very long period of time. And I had a really hard time finding my right work. It took me 23 years to find hypnosis as the way to be able to use my gifts and talents with understanding psychodynamics. So I would really like you to think about who it is that you are in front of those people you say that you love and care about so much. Because if you're just angry or taking out your problems on them, being jealous because maybe they get along with someone that you don't, or maybe you're jealous of what you think they have, although honestly, we never know what another person's truly going through unless they're honest with us about it. If they come to you and need help and guidance with something you may know. But that's only gonna happen most likely to the degree that you're honest about your challenges. And let me tell you something, with bankruptcy, with the brain tumor, with the manic depression, with a hysterectomy, with a busted ankle, with so many things to overcome in life, 
And frankly, I'm still working on making my business work. It's been 14 years, and it's still very much in process. But that's the thing. I will never give up on my dreams, and I will always follow through with bringing out the information that my clients have asked me to bring out to other healthcare practitioners that work in those areas that they've taught me to help them clear their problems. And mainly this is the anorexics, bulimics, and sex addicts, and even drug addicts. Because quite frankly, it is only through the unconscious mind that these things are going to be reversed. We understand that because we now understand through brain scans how this all operates physiologically. That being said, I want you to really think hard and clear about who you are. And what are you being when you're with those people you say you care so much about? How do you treat them? How do you talk to them? Do you do it with humility and with interest and care and empathy? Or are you being judgmental and defensive? Because, you know, you're going to receive back in any relationship that which you put out. And I can tell you right here, right now, I don't know too many people who want to be a butt of your sarcasm. I don't know anyone who wants to have your anger and resentment projected onto them. I don't know anybody who wants to live with a depressed person who can only come up with, this is all there is to life, endlessly. And I don't know anyone who wants to really spend time with someone who's consistently and constantly in overwhelm, because I don't know how to Focus on the things that truly matter to them instead of taking on too much. And I'll also leave you with this idea too. It's very important to focus on those things that truly matter to you in this world. What do you give a fuck about? I mean, really. It's harsh language on purpose, by the way. Because you see, there's too many people who allow other people to predetermine what they should be doing, what they should be thinking, and how they should be acting. Well, I have news for you. If you're an independently thinking person, your creator gave you the ability to do that should you decide to take it. You needn't wait for someone to tell you it's okay to do the things you want to do in this life. You just need to make a decision to take action. Go through the fear and do it. See what you can create. See what new things you can put out there in the world. Because I can tell you this too. There is no one who has achieved anything of any value. First of all, who wasn't willing to be a bit illogical. I mean, really, the Wright brothers using bicycles and figuring out how to make flying machines? Going to the moon? Going across the seas back in the... 1400s, when they thought the world was flat and they could go over the edge. There are many, many, many different people who have done amazing things because they were willing to be illogical. They wanted to try to make new things happen. They were innovators. They were visionaries. And they weren't asking other people for permission to go about defining what their life's goals were. They just did it. And so I'm offering this up to you as an idea for yourself. Figure out what you care about. Figure out about what kind of life you want to live. Figure out what you enjoy. And then create a life around those things. And stop making excuses. And by all means, stop saying yes to everybody in your life telling you that they need you for this and they need you for that. You know what? Adults, more often than not, can take care of themselves. If you have a husband who thinks you need to cook every goddamn meal he eats, do his fucking laundry for him, and take care of the kids, I think you need to have a very stern conversation with him and let him know that should he have lived alone, he would be doing these things on his own, as I did with my ex many moons ago, when he would argue with me about helping with the laundry, doing dishes after I cooked a meal, and other such things. Look, it's about being a collaborative effort, helping each other out with those things that we're good at, or even timing-wise, you know, my ex used to have film to bring to a photo finishing place. And it was real close to where we lived. And he didn't have time necessarily in the morning to do it. But on my way to my clients, I asked if he had any film to drop off. And I would do it for him. He didn't even have to freaking ask me. I just did it. 
because it wasn't convenient for him. He needed to be at work at a certain time. He took a bus. I had the car. So I helped him out. And that's the way it needs to be. Figure out how you can be of service to the people you love and do it in a way that's of givingness. However, you need to take the time and the awareness to do those things that truly matter to you. Those things that you know that you can do that will make a difference in this larger world of ours. Because it is through those actions, those activities, the creative pursuits we have, like my making these podcasts, or writing my books, or even creating a hypnotic induction for a client who needs to remember those things that they learned in the work we did together. So I'm going to challenge you. Let go of your damn excuses as to why you can't be present for the people in your life. And stop saying yes to every person who's going to sit there and usurp your time away from you from those things that you truly need to do to feel happy and fulfilled. Because honestly, the only people you truly need in your life are the people who love and support you and really honor who you are as a human being and want to see you succeed at your dreams and your visions. And the rest of them, let them go. We can only service so many friends at a time anyway because you know what? If they truly need you, if they're in crisis... You need to stop everything and be there for them. That's what real friends do, by the way. It's not a matter of always being there for the fun. It's a matter of being there to be of service when called upon with those really big things, those crises that sometimes happen in life. And it's not every little time they call you for every little whatever problem they have. I'm talking about the big ones. When your friend is in shock or they think they might be losing someone close to them or Maybe they lost a job or they came down with some horrible illness, something big. You understand what I'm saying here. Because that's what you would want from them in return. It's always the platinum rule. Do more than you would expect from somebody else. And you'll have the best relationships ever. And those relationships will never fail you. That's been my learning through life. My friends are there for me regardless. I don't even have to ask for things anymore. They just know. They just seem to have ESP, and they know when I need some help. And when they ask me for things, especially based on my expertise, guess what? I'm more than happy to help them out. It's a great thing to be able to work in collaboration like this. So, that's my challenge for you. And I would suggest that you really think about this clearly, about what truly matters to you and how you want to be in this world and how you want to interact with those people that you say you love and care so much about. Now I'm going to switch over to my program that I'm doing in Palo, California, at the Palo Casino and Spa to help youth age 10 to 19 reverse diabetes. Parents are going to necessarily need to be there If a parent's not married but is living with a partner or has a partner in their life, that partner needs to be there too because you're going to be learning some very important things from medical professionals, mental health professionals, and people who are professional with food. I'll be doing some hypnosis to help things come easier in terms of shifting over eating and increasing activity and things of this nature. However, everyone in the family needs to be on board. So everyone needs to show up, meaning the youth with the diabetes and parents. There's going to be a disappearing discount starting at 1170, then going up to 1270, then 1370, and ending at 1470. That's $1,470 for each person coming in the family. And that includes breakfast and lunch. We're going to have a lot of giveaways to help you with resources and it's going to be a rather enlightening time where you're going to really learn how to really deal with diabetes so that your youth doesn't need to have horrific ill health earlier than you would have liked to see happen. Because you know, people don't die of the diabetes per se. They die because they're not getting the nutrition that they need. They die because they have systemic illnesses due to not being able to have an immune system to fight off disease processes, not having the right nutrition 
to build up their bodies the way they need to be had because of malnutrition, because of really urinating too much and allowing the water-soluble vitamins and minerals to exit their bodies. This is something that Dr. Mercola talks about in his blogs. So I'm telling you, there's things that we can do to help your kids reverse it. And the way that you sign up for this is you go to the Mind Body app on your phone or your iPad. If you don't have it, go ahead and download it. Look for Dying Visions Hypnosis. And you will see Disappearing Diabetes and Youth program. And you buy one ticket per person who is coming to the event. And if there are two parents, or a parent and a partner in a youth, that means three tickets to be bought. So everyone is covered. You can do it easily with your credit card, and the sooner you do it, the less you're gonna pay. Because fast action should be rewarded. There are only going to be 50 families and five families from the Native Americans down there at the Pelo Reservation so that each person, each family, gets enough care to know that they're getting exactly what they need so that they can be successful upon returning home. Because my bottom line is I want my clients to have the positive results they came to receive, which means that everyone needs to partake in what we're doing. So, Mind Body App, Dawning Visions Hypnosis Inc., Disappearing Diabetes in Youth. As always, thank you for spending your time with me. Till next time. If you have enjoyed Claim Your Excellent Life, we'd really appreciate it if you go over to iTunes and give it a five star review. If you have found Claim Your Excellent Life to be helpful to you, there may be even life-altering with the information that we have shared here. And to allow us to continue this work, which we really do enjoy doing for you, you can sponsor us at patreon.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, A-T-R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Again, that's P as in Paul, A-T as in Tom, R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com where there's a few different levels of sponsorship that you can choose from to help us to continue doing this work. We thank you for any assistance that you are able to give us. Thank you for listening to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy, Suzanne teaches you how to do this through building high self-esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self-esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you.